my undergraduate degree was a sandwich degree and what that meant was I had a year out training and I did forensic science. So I spent uh, training doing research techniques in forensic science and also then a period of time doing routine work. When I graduated, my mentor advised I did a PhD. So I started a PhD on a pure biochemistry project on enzymes, but I really didn't enjoy it. And so I then applied for another PhD and this was based at a hospital in Birmingham on antibiotic resistance and looking at why some drugs don't work um, and identifying the target of those drugs and got completely switched on to looking at antibiotic resistance and never went back. So I stayed at the hospital for five years. So I did my PhD in three, stayed for two years as a postdoctoral researcher and then got a five-year fellowship, then lectureship and stayed at Birmingham pretty much there on. I've had a, a short period of time as a visiting professor at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, but apart from then, I've been here the whole time. Antibiotic resistance is hugely important to everyone throughout the globe. I think it's very few people who are unaware that we've got increasing numbers of antibiotic resistant bacteria and fewer and fewer effective treatments. So our work to understand how bacteria become resistant and then use this as a basis for drug discovery is, is very important. The main focus of my team is understanding how bacteria become resistant to antibiotics and we work in two particular areas. Uh, one area is multi-drug resistance uh, by a single mechanism. This is a pump that exports antibiotics called multi-drug efflux. And our second area is transferable resistance, where bacteria can transfer genes between them that confer resistance. We've recently described a clinical isolate of salmonella from a patient who failed treatment with numerous antibiotics. Unfortunately, they died. It was an untreatable infection, where we carried out whole genome sequencing. And this showed us a new mutation in the transporter that pumps out antibiotics. And interestingly, what we found is that this single change in this protein increased the pumping out of a, a very important class of drugs called fluoroquinolones, but interestingly, increased the sensitivity of that same bacterium to other drugs. Now, these couldn't have been used clinically, but this now opens the way to understanding how this transporter works and maybe designing new antibiotics that are not going to be exported as much as others. Our research on antibiotic resistant bacteria found in the food chain um, was particularly important because that was used by several uh, governmental agencies to start assessing the role of antibiotic use in animals and impact upon human health. More latterly, we've also worked on biocide resistance and work from my team and our collaborators was used by the EU to make new legislation for uh, licensing uh, biocides for use and ensuring that studies are done to show they do not confer cross resistance to antibiotics used in human medicine. I always have PhD students working with me um, and have done for many, many years. I've 23 have graduated from my team and I currently have three for which I'm the primary supervisor and I'm second supervisor on a couple more. That means many people have gone on to do other things. So four ex-PhD students of mine are already full professors at other universities. I'm also very keen to encourage equality and diversity. So particularly with gender, but in increasingly also other minority groups. So I'm really pleased that two of my ex-graduates are female professors. The Institute of Microbiology and Infection at Birmingham is one of the largest groupings of microbiologists in Europe. And there's some outstanding scientists here, which uh, PhD students will just mix with on a daily basis. But in addition to that, we regularly go to national conferences and international meetings. So large meetings for microbiology, or smaller Gordon conferences. So my students will network both nationally and internationally with leaders in the field. I almost always have international students in my team, some of whom have come in on their own scholarships, but one who's just finishing off came in on a University of Birmingham Elite Scholarship. And they're very valuable. They, they bring in new ideas, new ways of working, 
And it's great to have the diversity in the team of different people with different cultural backgrounds. So I have two aspirations. One is based on my research where I really want to discover something that makes a difference. So either a new target for antibiotics or a new molecule that can be developed into a drug, maybe a molecule that inhibits multi-drug efflux. The other big aspiration is to really inspire governments, policymakers, to invest in tackling antibiotic resistance. And that's why I do so much public engagement work. Research allows you to be very creative. And so my mind never stops. I'm always thinking of new things, uh, new hypotheses or ways to investigate hypotheses. So there's always a very long to-do list. So I want to get here as soon as I can to really start getting down that list. Uh, there's so much to be done on antibiotic resistance. If we're really going to tackle the crisis, then we have to work very hard at it.